<coughs> pain, so much pain and suffering, so much fear in the world today, not seen since at least the 1980s, when the AIDS pandemic was in full swing. Anxiety of the people, I can feel it. I can feel the herd mentality in full panic mode. I can feel the anxiety when I go to the shops, when I go out. I can feel the people panicking. I can feel the rain clouds gathering. I can feel the weeping of many souls. <clears throat> this is a grave day for humanity, a grave week, a grave month, a grave year for humanity. Yeah. Humanity sort of brought this on themselves because if everyone was vegan, these illnesses wouldn't be around. A lot of these different illnesses wouldn't be around. It's the mingling of our DNA with animal DNA that has caused these illnesses. And how do you mingle? an animal's DNA with your own. By consuming that animal, you are consuming the DNA of that animal. And therefore, you're, min you're allowing the bacteria in that animal to become, to find a way to destroy your own DNA. Bacteria and viruses are around everywhere. There are trillions in the air now between me and this phone. There must be trillions of them. Some of them could easily kill me if I was to focus on them. If I was to focus on some of those viruses, if I was to focus on some of them bacteria, if I was to give all my attention to it, then I would open myself up to the very real possibility that a lot of that bacteria could kill me. <laughs> I could do. We could all go in self-destruct mode. We could all think about how we're going to die. We could all think about these different things. I could die tomorrow, I could die the next, the day after, I could die, die the day after that, I could die today. This could kill me, that could kill me, the other could kill me. But the thing with this kind of mentality is going on in the world today where people are constantly dwelling on the fact that whether it will kill them or their relatives is creating a great deal of panic and this panic will could destroy society certainly shut down society and may even destroy society we have to be strong in order to in order to survive well, of course we're going to survive. It's not. Like, it's not. It's the death rate's only like one or two percent. So of course, people will survive. But people in their head are thinking that they won't survive. When the reality is that the death rate is only one or two percent. Which means that out of a hundred people, only one, only one percent of those people will probably die. Um, and that's all the ages from a baby right up to the age of the oldest person in the world. So, you know, most people are below the average age. Say the oldest person in the world, uh, according to Guinness Book of Records, the oldest person in the world lived to 122. So say the average age then is about half that. Say the average age is about 60 or 61. Most people are younger than 60. And therefore, most people have a very good chance of surviving. 
the death rate doesn't even reach 1% until a person reaches 50. So, so this panicking is not really, it's more to do with a person's mind than actually, than actually the reality of the situation. Because the reality of the situation is that almost everyone survives, or will survive it. I'm not saying that people won't die, because of course people will die. But what I'm saying is that the panic is actually worse than actually catching it. Because if you take that 1%, that's the actual death rate. The actual critical illness rate is probably maybe 10 times less than that, so maybe 0.1%. And that is a person that becomes seriously ill. The vast majority is probably 0.001% who only have a mild cough or a mild cold or maybe a bit of or maybe a bit of high temperature perhaps. And that's about it. It's like similar to an average flu. Um, of course, this infection attacks the lungs, so it'd be more more similar to a chest infection, I would imagine. Um, <clears throat> now I've had chest infections in the past and it hasn't killed me so I'm not really concerned about it I've even gone running with a chest infection before however I did have to sit down on the floor because I started see seeing stars I once went running on the canal in Joyridge maybe 5-10 years ago um, before I moved to Hanby Road uh, yeah I went running on the canal and, um, and what happened next? Oh yeah, I had a chest infection at the time. <clears throat> I was bored of staying in so I went, <coughs> so I went out for a jog and um, and I just had to sit on the floor because I couldn't breathe. I was literally seeing stars and after sitting on the, after kneeling on the floor for about 30 seconds or whatever, I, I could get, obviously get up again. I obviously didn't knock, I didn't pass out or anything, I just had to sit down for a minute because I couldn't breathe. But it did actually help my chest. And actually the worst thing you can do with this coronavirus is, to, I know they say stay indoors so other people don't catch it. But what they're not saying is that it's also good to get outside into the fresh air, but I don't mean in busy places. I'm talking about go up in the hills, go up into the go up into the forest, go up into the go to the go to parks that are quiet, not busy parks. And I say they're only saying that people should stay indoors because they want to obviously they want to slow down the spread of the coronavirus, which is a good idea in itself. But to build up a person's immunity, it might be better to also get fresh air as well but do so in a place where it's quiet. So, yeah. So I'm going to meditate and pray for the people. Oh, it's hot in here. Oof. Got this heating on all the time. I'm gonna have to open a window. I think. Imagine if I open a window, the phone's gonna fall out the window. Isn't it?
<laughs> I haven't got curly voice, it's the heating that's drying out my lungs. <clears throat> Neither of them are concerned about it for myself, but other people, family members, and other people. Was that in the shed? Oh. Ooh, I always bring the tears in my eyes talking to God. Oh, gosh. Oh. So pure, so pristine, so flawless, divine love I am. Oh gosh. Oh, sorry about that. I was just talking to Jesus.
sometimes I feel a slight concern and then I go into these meditations and I talk directly to God and I can feel the concern disappear <laughs> the only one the only one I can truly trust the only one I can truly rely on the only one I truly love I think this virus is good in some ways because it brings us closer to God makes us think about our elderly loved ones <laughs> makes us more inclined to pray for them if we don't already it makes us more inclined it shows the personality of others for instance, it becomes obvious who is selfish and who isn't. For instance, you go to the supermarket, as we did yesterday in Aldo, in Blackpool, and there was only one single packet of toilet roll. 